Alright, I haven't done a voiceover for a workout in like, since NAM, so we're gonna get into one of my leg workouts I did this week. When it comes to my leg workouts, there are two main things I always focus on. That's my ass and my calves. My ass is because that's the most functional part of your lower body. You need That needs to be the focus of all your workouts when you're doing legs because that, not only is the strongest muscle in your body, but it incorporates itself into every leg movement you do. And I do my calves because I got, I'm insecure about my skinny calves, so I do them a lot. I do a ton of lunges. Like when I do a leg workout, my first, like a lot of people start off with squats, they start off with leg press. I don't do squats because my lower back, but I could do, I would say lunges are like 10 times better than a leg press. Lunges, you know, not only is it uh, for your legs and stuff, but it's good core stability and it just hits like all different parts of, of your lower body. So as you can see here, um, sometimes I'll do walking, sometimes I'll do, I'll stay in place. And the key thing about when you're doing lunges, you need to focus on pushing through your heel. So when you step down, right, you're doing lunges, you step down. When you're pushing back up, don't push off your toes. Make sure you're pushing off your heel, and that way you'll really feel it in your ass. Like you'll you'll know next time you do it. Make sure like focus, and that's the same thing for leg press too or squats. <coughs> Imagine yourself like pushing off the ground, like you're you're pushing yourself off the earth when you're doing it. That way it'll really focus on the ass. The other thing when you're doing lunges is you got to make sure when you're stepping forward that your knee is not buckling in. You got to focus on it being outside of. Imagine your foot. You want to make sure that they're the two are not lined up like this. You want your knee a little bit outside more, so it's almost like curving in. That way it's not putting any stress on the joints inside your knee. So as you can see me here, right? I go down and I'm pushing off my heel to come back up. And I keep my knee on the outside. And I'll do anywhere from like five, six, I'll do like three warm-up sets with really lightweight. Because when you're doing lunges, you know, you're hitting, you're not just hitting your ass or your thighs or whatever, you're hitting, you know, all the tendons and the, and the muscles that are inside your groin, and, and those are like really, really sensitive. If you start off at really high weights, you're probably gonna tear some shit up. When I do calves, I do, I get that little, that little, uh, I'll superset these two because, you know, you wanna work on things that you want to improve first in your workout so that your muscles aren't fatigued or anything. That's, that way I superset lunges with the calf raises because if I do calves at the end of my workout, I'll end up doing like two sets, getting super tired and being like, ah, fuck this, I'm not doing them anymore. Same thing with a lot of people have that problem with abs. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll put something on the Smith machine where that it doesn't move front or back like this way, it only goes up and down. So that way, you know, you have good balance. It automatically gives you good balance so you could kind of up the weight on that. And you could see me here. I have the wood box so it's about four inches off the ground. So that way when you come down, like you're getting a stretch on your Achilles. Like you gotta make sure you come all the way down let it sit there for a second and then go all the way up. So don't just like rock it up and down, up and down, up and down, because you're not getting a really good like muscle tension. You're not getting a really good pull in the muscle. Here I switch to, like I said, I do sometimes standing, sometimes walking. Here I did a combination of both. I think it hits different muscles. So the more you can do it, the better, the better off you'll be. And then I got into some leg extensions, leg curls. For this, I don't go crazy weight. Um, I just make sure when you get to the top, you get a really good squeeze on your quads. And that's really the key component to it. And when I'm doing this kind of exercise, like the leg extensions, I'll do sometimes one leg, sometimes both legs. I'll switch it up. Um, I'll put my feet close together. I'll put my feet farther apart. That, that way you'll hit all different angles and every muscle within the quad. I think you could probably see it here. I'll probably switch up at some point. Maybe not. I just literally just watch this video and do a voiceover as it goes, so it probably just sounds ridiculous. There you go, see? Do a couple one-leggers, a couple one-leggers there. And it just, you know, it, it it hits all these different parts of, of the muscles that it's like well-rounded and it's more aesthetic that way. If you just do one angle, it's the same thing with like if you're doing like a chest. That's why you do incline, that's why you move your hand, your, your grips go in different places, so you hit all the different muscles. And this is just a little hamstring. I'm really bad with like keeping up consistency with hamstrings and hitting them often. Like here, you, you see my feet moving in and out kind of because again, you're hitting different parts of the hamstring. Um, and I didn't show all the sets in this workout obviously because it's kind of a pain in the air. Like I can't listen to music if I'm videotaping with my phone and it just like kind of gets me out of focus. But at the end, I always, always foam roll my legs. Otherwise, the next day, you know, you're gonna be, you're not gonna be able to walk downstairs. You're just gonna be complaining for like the next six days. But if you foam roll, I definitely suggest doing it for I usually hit each muscle for like a good 15 to 20 seconds so I'll do both quads both hamstrings both calves um, then I'll hit my hips and my my uh, my like groin area if they're really sore 
but I'll do that for maybe like five, 10 minutes afterwards. And I'm telling you, like the warm up and the cool down, things like this are just as important as the actual workout. Hey, so I hope you enjoyed that little uh, workout. Voice, sorry it was so quick. I'm driving into Brooklyn right now to meet my grandparents for dinner. I'm already super late, so I had to rush through the workout. Therefore, I didn't get like a full, full workout and I didn't get to show you everything, but hope you kind of got the point there. It's gonna take like two hours to get there. Meeting Kelbert, my sister, she lives in Soho, New York. Oh no, she, well, she actually just moved out, but she still lives in the city, Lower East Side. She's taking the train in, I believe. So we're meeting at the same time. We're gonna go out to dinner. It's Friday night right now. Normally I would like rather not my grandparents, you know, cousin and aunt, uncle kind of thing on like a Friday night because that's like, you know, it's prime time going out seasons. It's Mark season right now. I need to cherish those nights. You know, like I could do the weekdays, I could do daytime during the weekends, even though those are usually booked too, but you get the point. But this weekend I can't go out. Like I, I just, I need to buckle down. I need to really like get shit going because this is like prime, 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 prime time for my channel to grow. Like August into September when fantasy season's about to happen. So this weekend I have to get a shitload of work done and make sure everything's ready for when I leave for Cali. So I slack off for a week. I'm probably missing out on a good, I don't know, maybe 100, 200 subscribers in this time. That's big for my channel right now. A lot of you guys that have been with me since like the start or like at least like lower amount of subscribers, maybe like four or 500 will reach out to me, you know, and be like, oh dude, I've been here for a while. Like it's crazy to see how quickly you're growing right now. And it is, I'm probably getting an on average about 25 to 30 new subscribers every single day. So obviously I need to keep up with the pace. And what's crazy is like, if you're looking at fantasy football stuff now and in July and stuff, you're in like the very small minority. So I can't even imagine how, how much more engagement, how many more people will be on the channel come the end of August. So I need to have everything wrapped up and that's kind of, you know, anyways, back to the point. That's why I'm not going out this weekend. I need to have Friday, Saturday. The last few weekends, I've just been going out too much. And then like, basically if I go out during the day, Saturday, that cuts off all working Saturday into Saturday night. And then I wake up on Sunday and I'm like, you saw in the last vlog, me and Brandon are just like stupid all day. I don't get any work done. So I need these like weekend days right now because I don't have a lot of them left before the season starts. I think we're going out to eat at like a diner or something. Like. Old people love diners, I don't understand. I guess it's like, I guess if you think about it, diners like American food. It's almost like a, a diner's like a shitty version of like an Applebee's or something. So it's like a shitty version of a shitty American restaurant. And I guess back in the, eh, maybe that's why grandparents love diners because back in the day, they didn't have like shitty Applebee's to give you like half price apps and chilies and Fridays. So they got accustomed to diners. Now, someone got in a bad car accident, don't text and drive. Don't vlog and drive. I don't think I've ever been to like a Friday's or an Applebee's or a Chili's with my grandparents. I wonder if that would be like their new go-to if I took them out there. For any of you guys that go out with your grandparents, do they love those kind of restaurants? I feel like that, I feel like that was revolutionary what I just came to. Like I, it, it was like a, an epiphany. Like that's why grand, are, am I crazy? Am I, are my grandparents the only ones that like diners? Literally we go to the diner, like anytime we go out to eat to the diner and I'm like, like I really gotta eat like some soggy ass french fries, shitty. What are you doing? I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Also, one more thing. Yo, I, if you watched my last episode when I was mowing my lawn, dude, literally blister, blister, slipped through the bottom of my hand, top of my finger. Yeah, I got four separate bleeding cuts from doing the lawnmower. I'm pissed, I just wanted to yell about that. How we doing? It's a beautiful Monday morning. It's August 7th, around 11 a.m. and I wanted to discuss something uh, on the social media marketing front. So we can get a little diversity up in here. I think it was last vlog saying how I wanted to run ads to my personal site, right? Like my blog, using my blog post, wow. I've been up the last couple nights just like binge watching shows, it's such a problem. Because Game of Thrones came on yesterday and I didn't watch it when I came, I was legit working on, so I'm working on the draft guide for fantasy which I'll be coming out with next week. And I, I swear I was working on it for like 13 straight hours. I didn't move from this seat. And before I knew it, it was like 10, 15, 10, 20. I was like, shit, I missed Thrones. So I'm like, now I can't go on social media until tomorrow when I watch it. So I like forced myself to watch it at 1 a.m. last night so that I could go on social media today. Anyways, I was saying I was running ads to one of my blog posts to my website and I was, and I'm running them now and they're going really well. I'm literally, I could show you this because this is mine. Two cents a click. My cost per click is two cents. And it has a click-through ratio of 11.7%. 
So I know you're probably, most of you guys have no idea like what that means in a marketing sense, but that's very, 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 very good results. Basically the way a lot of companies should work is that you know you, you bring in your customers through cold traffic and that's what I'm doing. So since I'm using, a, a, let me put this in here, sorry. So since my blog section is almost all fantasy football, right? I'll run ads to a blog post. It's like top three sleepers for the fantasy season. And I'll target people, I'll target males, ages like 21 to 35, people who most likely read those articles that have interests in or liked the pages of like Yahoo Fantasy Football, ESPN Fantasy Football, and some of the more niche fantasy football sites. So it's targeting the right people, as you can see, I'm getting two cents a click. And that's a, that's something any kind of business can do, right? If you're selling, for instance, like, say you're like a sneakerhead, right? And you're selling, you're like a reseller of shoes or something like that. I don't know, that's the first thing that popped into my head, right? You could write a blog post that says like top five hottest choose to cop this summer. And maybe, you know, you gotta refine and tweak the targeting and that's how you get better results, but maybe you, you target people who, who like hype beast or people who like finish line or something like that. And from there, you know, you drive in traffic to your website. Everyone who clicks on that link, you can pretty much assume that they like sneakers, right? And from there, that's when you start retargeting. So that's cold audience, people who have never been to your site. Once they've clicked on it, you know that they have an interest in sneakers. So you could retarget specifically to those people. And now you could use more like sales kind of ads. So the next ad they might see is not gonna be the blog post. The next ad they might see is actually you putting up images of like products that you're selling on your, whether it's like shoe cleaner or actual shoes or something like that. And then you target the people that have been to your site because you know that they have an interest in shoes, right? So you're not wasting money on people that don't care for for any of that shit. So that's that's retargeting, right? The cold audience is more for driving traffic. That's like brand awareness. And that's where a lot of brands go wrong because they think that brand awareness is not real. They think it's like a stupid way to waste money, but Facebook makes sure that it's a good way that you utilize your money. And then from there, that's when you start running the sales ads and that's where the conversions kind of pile up. And that's where the real money is, like the revenue bottom line kind of shit. So what I'm doing now is running the traffic to my fantasy football blog post and then I just set up a remarketing campaign so that it's running to people that have clicked on it. And I just designed, these are really quickly, but I designed a couple shirts and dad hats to these people that have clicked on it. It literally just has fantasy season on them. But, you know, it's people that like fantasy football, of course, because they're reading the blog post. That will get to them and, you know, hopefully that will interest them in buying the product. Whatever, you get the point. But that's, that's kind of how... That's the process of, of Facebook ads per se. And it's very different on a, a client to client basis, but that's a, that's a very good startup. It's a very good basis point. If you are thinking about running like an e-commerce business or something like that, you drive traffic through people that have interests that relate to your product or your website or your niche or whatever it may be. And then from there, you know, the main goal should be from these blog posts is to get people to sign up for your email list or something like that. So you have to give them enough value that they're willing to trade their email for whatever you're giving them. It could be an offer like 10%, 15% off your next purchase or like sign up and we'll give you exclusive content that you don't get if you're not on the email list, something like that. That's why every single time you go on a website, think of like any website you go on, the first thing that pops up is like a, it's called a light box. It's like it drops from the top and it's like get 10% off your next purchase signing up for our newsletter. Your email list as a company, an email list is so valuable. Not only can you insert that email list into Facebook and run ads to it, but you know, you could just do an email campaign strictly to those people and give them a straight up promo code in, in the email. So this is like the big picture of marketing in a sense. It encapsulates everything for email marketing, Facebook marketing, Google obviously, search. There's so many different forms of marketing and as, as, as the marketing world kind of evolves, it's quickly changing and it, you're just focusing on where attention is. That's why shit like TV doesn't sell anymore. Commercials are a waste of fucking money because no one watches commercials. You either fast forward through it or if you're watching a TV show, one, it's on demand so you don't have commercials. Two, as soon as commercials come on, boom, you're picking up your phone. You're not looking at that shit. So while the impressions are there, maybe there are a million people that happen to be uh, uh, buy a TV while your commercial pops on, like 75% of them are not watching it. If you can find a way to seamlessly integrate your ad into a Facebook or an Instagram, that's why social media is so important nowadays because that's where the eyeballs are, right? That's where people are. And if you can find an effective sales strategy to get through there, then you've kind of won business right there. Sorry for that tangent, but that's that's just like, I wanna give you guys a, a better basis for what I'm really doing and, and, and kind of the vision I have and how I see the marketing landscape right now as a whole. Because people get used to shit. A lot of big companies waste money on like display advertising, like ads on the side of websites and shit. People are so 
brainwashed to completely ignore those ads. Just think about yourself going on a website, you see ads on the side of the websites, you literally don't even see them, right? But if you're in your Facebook feed, maybe you see a sponsored post that kind of relates to you and it's, or it's funny or it's got a good offer or something, you're not just gonna pass that by. It integrates seamlessly into this feed, into the stream, right? And that's why like a guy like Mark Zuckerberg is so fucking rich and so smart is he's found a way to really penetrate everybody because you're there, you're not leaving Facebook anytime soon, and he's found a way to insert the ads and stuff just really flawlessly into the system. It's interesting to watch, so that's that. So it's it's Wednesday night around uh, six o'clock, and a couple of my subscribers reached out to me. I, I think one of them is a subscriber, I don't know, him and his friend or something. They do a podcast. Now they're located out in Detroit, really random, or they're on a radio show, I don't know. If it's radio or podcast or something, uh, but they reached out and they're like, we want to uh, collab. What do you think about getting together sometime this week and just talking fantasy football? So I'm like, bet. What else are we going to do? Officially that season season. So uh, in about 20 minutes, we're getting on and we're going to like record, I guess, which is kind of cool. As you're growing this audience, as I'm growing on the YouTube really quickly, it's good to kind of diversify your audience. If you can hit a podcast market, collab with other YouTubers too. I know there's a, a collab I'm going to do with another fantasy football channel, fantasy football advice. And they have a pretty big following. They have like 4,000 or 5,000 people. So they have more than me, which is funny because they started last summer and uh, it's two two kids around, I think like my age. And they email me and they're like, hey, we're gonna start a, a YouTube channel. And they ask me some questions about it or whatever. And they, they grind it all last summer, all season. And they have like double the amount of subscribers I have, which is crazy because you know, they started after I had already started, but they put in way more work than I did. So shout out to Fantasy Football Advice. It's cool for them. And we're going to be doing a collab. So look out for that. Since it's a podcast, they have audio equipment set up. But since I do the YouTube, I'm, I guess I'm just going to have like the camera set up here. And hopefully you guys can hear what we're saying. We're just going to be like debating rankings. I don't really know. You guys probably don't care if this is the vlog stuff. But so I finished my fantasy football draft guide, which is crazy. It took me. I worked so hard on this thing if it loads it's like an e-magazine i'm gonna be uh selling it and it's downloadable so this is kind of nuts trying to uh download it unfortunately this website i used for it if you go past a certain number of pages you have to sign up for like a corporate account so you actually have to pay for it so i have to pay i think like 30 dollars in order to do that and be able to share it as a pdf so that's the only way i'd be able to download it and then like sell it so i'm kind of working on that now i'm going to release it this weekend and i'll let you guys know how it goes oh man i feel like i've worked non-stop the last week on this thing i'm so excited to have it done a uh, quick update on the magazine figured everything out is up available on the site right now which is crazy i made a video i put it up probably 20 minutes ago i had like 10 to 12 people already purchase it so we're cruising right now and it's dope getting a, a ton of engagement a lot of positive feedback on on everything i made a subscribers only league for fantasy football for anyone that subscribes to my youtube channel put out the video like yesterday and i told people to email me if they want in i've gotten over 100 emails already so i'm picking at random completely at random who gets in the league of course a lot i feel like a piece of shit because like 85 to 95 people are not going to get into the league because it's only 14 people rules are rules otherwise we'd all be savages Sounds like a pretty good earth, to be honest with you. Um, but that's gonna cut out this video because it's Thursday, like 2.30. I think I'm about to take a nap. I've been, I was up too early today working on the damn draft guide, but it's all done now. I'm gonna nap, hit the gym, and that will be my evening. And I'll probably binge watch Sopranos until like 4 a.m. like I've been doing the last seven nights in a row. It's actually become a problem. How you doing? How you doing? So yeah, if you enjoyed the video, thumbs up, please. Scroll down a little bit, hit that subscribe button if you're new, and I'll see y'all on the next episode.